Welcome to this Zombicide Black Plague painting tutorial. In this video, we'll be painting all manners of zombies from the Black Plague core box set, using the official Warpaint Zombicide Black Plague paint set from the Army Painter, as well as sprays, brushes, and other Zombicide war paints. Here's a look at the products we used in this tutorial. First, the miniature file set, Color Primer Necrotic Flesh, the Black Plague paint set, of course, the zombie core paint set and the two expansion sets, Toxic Prison set and Survivor paint set. We used the three most wanted brushes and we finished off with the Aegis suit set in varnish for protection. Before we start our painting, we need to prepare the miniatures. All the models in these tutorial films are gaming models straight out of the box set. And you need to remove the mold lines using the files from the miniature file set. There's three different shapes of files, making it easier to find the right file for the right job. Afterwards, it's essential to wash the miniatures in hot, soapy water to remove any leftovers of the oily release agents used to cast the models. If you don't, you might find your paint struggling to stick to the models afterwards. Once dry, the zombies are ready for painting. We decided to spray all our zombies using our Color Primer Necrotic Flesh, saving lots of time for base coating. Color Primers are unique sprays, a combination of Primer and Color in one, and must be used differently from other hobbies. Start off by shaking the spray for at least one and a half minutes to really mix the heavy pigment inside. We stuck the miniatures to a strip of cardboard while spraying. That ensures we can keep the correct spray distance and it stops the models from falling up. Start by spraying from a close distance of about 20 centimeters using flowing movements. Notice how we start the spray action to the side of the model and move the spray across all of them. No short bursts directly on the miniatures. Turn the strip around and spray the back from the top and the side and the bottom using thin coats getting the spray into all the crevices. Finish off by turning the spray upside down and empty the nozzle until only gas comes out. That stops the nozzle from clogging up and your spray will be ready for next time. Once dry, remove the models from the spray strip and now we're ready for painting. First up is the base coat stage, and for that we're going to use the Regimen brush. In this tutorial we'll have a look at the zombie runner, but the technique goes for any zombies in the box. We're painting a small group at one go, and we start off with the colour Elf Green. By using the Regimen brush I ensure I get a good speed on my painting, make sure that you get the wall paint all over the area and get a good even coverage. Now is to stick with elf green and paint different parts of the clothes on the other zombies in the group. One is the hood, next one is the shirt and maybe the next one is the shoes. That speeds up the painting as you're sticking to one color and you don't have to change. So a bit of production line work here. On the next stage we simply take the next color. Now I'm using the filthy suit from the zombie core set and I'm painting the shirt on this model. Then it's on to the next color, this time leather brown from the Black Plague paint set. And I'm doing leather brown on all five models. Again, using a different piece of clothing. That way I mix up the models, making them look slightly different. However, I speed up my painting time no end since I'm using one color at a time on my production line. I carry on the base coat stage, this time with another green color, moldy clothes from the zombie corset, and that way I can add endless variations to the uniforms of my zombies. The real trick at this stage is just to be neat and avoid getting paint onto the zombie skin. We want to leave that and then the necrotic flesh from the spray color and thus saving time. 
However, if you do make mistakes at the base coat stage, simply touch up using the plague skin from the Black Plague paint set. It's a 100% match to the necrotic flesh spray. With the base coating all done, it's time to add some shading to the model. We'll start off with the plague shader on the skin tone. Plague shader is a dark green ink wash that's designed to go on top of the necrotic flesh spray. I'm using my regiment brush as it holds a good amount of paint and uh, is perfect when working with inks. Try here to get as much ink as you can on the model without it pooling too much and getting onto the other part of the model where you don't want it. I normally splash on quite a bit and then sort of suck it up a little bit uh, until I get the right amount of, of paint on the model. And as you can see, I'm working on all five models at a time, setting up my production line. I want to get the models finished and onto the gaming table as fast as possible. Once I'm done with the plate shader, it's time to add some shading to the rest of the models. This time, it's Deep Shader. Deep Shader is a dark brown ink that goes on, well, all colors. And again, I'm using my regiment brush, splashing on quite a bit and uh, sucking it up again to make sure that I don't get uncontrolled pools. And this ink wash goes on, well, anything but the skin, be it brain matter base as in this example or the elf green or zombie skin or any color the brown shading is a perfect all-round shader with both shaders fully dry it's time for highlight as in all the tutorial films in this black plague painting series we're giving the models two highlights the first highlight is always the same as the base coat. In this instance, we're starting with the flesh and we're using the plague skin. Plague skin being a 100% match to the necrotic flesh spray. The aim of the first highlight is to redefine the base colors again, leaving just some shading showing through in the deepest recesses. I'm painting on my plague skin using a mix of dry brushing technique and precision painting. Here, trying to paint the rips and leaving some dark green in the deepest areas. Bear in mind that we'll be adding a second flesh highlight in a minute, so try not to keep your first highlight too small. I carry on highlighting all the models, again using the same color as in the base coat stage. Furthy suit, moldy clothes, leather brown, etc. The aim is to leave some deep shader showing in the deepest recesses and also to strengthen the base colors. That concludes the first highlight and we move on to the second and final highlight, starting with a flesh tone. I'm using my insane detail brush and we're using brain matter beige from the zombie corset. Try to be really careful now and add only very thin lines on the very raised edges. You want to enhance that 3D effect, bearing in mind that when you play a zombie side game, you look at a model from about a foot. And that means you want to saturate that 3D effect for a striking effect. As a little top tip, it's worth mentioning that you don't need to spend too much time on the hands as they'll be covered in blood. And I'm working through all five models in my little group, highlighting the zombie skin a second time. With the skin done, it's time to highlight all the clothes. We're starting with our example and highlighting the elf green, and this time with the color Combat Fatigue from the Survivor paint set. And as I've done in the other stages, I'll do the Combat Fatigue highlights on all the models having elf green, thus speeding up my painting. And then we move on to the brown area. I'm mixing in a little leather brown into the bony spike 
for a bright highlight color. Now that works over the leather brown areas on the very raised edges, like here on the shoes and on the pouch. And again, working through all the leather brown areas on all the models. Next color to highlight is the filthy suit. And again, I'm doing my own highlight mix. Filthy suit with brain matter beige, about a 50-50 mix. And as with all the fine highlights, I'm using my insane detail brush to keep the brushwork fine and precise. And the final bit to do on our example zombie is the green hood. And that's being highlighted with a mix of moldy clothes and zombie skin. I'm not going to go over all the colors for all five models. Have a look at the other tutorial videos to see what highlight colors I've used on the other zombies and survivors. The bases are painted filthy suit using the regiment brush. And with that dry, I take out the small dry brush and using Necromancer Cloak, I stable on some dark areas representing dirt from the underground. And finally, to the fun part. It's time to add some zombieside blood and gore. We're using Crusted Saw and Glistening Blood, starting with Crusted Saw. Crusted Saw is a dark, bloody colour. And that's to represent the old dried up blood. I'm starting with the hands, giving a sort of semi dry brush, semi paint, adding sort of spatters of old blood halfway up the arm. And down towards the hands and fingers, I'm adding a bit more blood. I'm doing that on both hands and also the face. As I'm painting blood, on the rest of the model, I'm using a slightly different technique. I'm using a thinned down version of crusted saw to represent that the old blood has sort of seeped into the clothing. I continue with this technique on the base of the model as well, making sure that the edge of each blood pool is thinned to represent that it's seeping out on the floor. Time to add some fresh blood using glistening blood. It's a gloss color and goes on as our sort of highlight color on the blood. On these models, I'm using only a little bit, adding sort of freshly blood dripping down from the zombie. Less is more, but really, it's up to you. I'm also adding a few dabs of glistening blood to the base to represent sort of blood being spilled recently. And that concludes the painting. Our zombies have been painted because we want to play games with them. And that's why you need to protect them with some varnish. We're using the Aegis Suit Satin Varnish. Spray the models using just a few thin coats on either side from a distance of about 30 centimeters. That will do the job. And as always, finish by holding the can upside down and empty the nozzle until only gas comes out. And that's the zombies all done, ready for the gaming table. In this tutorial, we've been looking at the zombie runners, but the painting techniques goes for any kind of zombies. For more inspiration, make sure you check out our step-by-step -step galleries on our website, or check out the other films, especially how to paint the survivor. Enhance your gaming experience and play with painted models. Thanks for watching.